This is RealAgriculture.com Seed Pod, the podcast that gives you insight into the Canadian seed industry. Sean Haney here with RealAgriculture.com, and it is episode four of the Seed Pod. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for listening. Uh, today we are joined by Nicholas Petruic. He is with Bear Crop Science. He is a seed growth specialist based in southern Saskatchewan. Actually, to be totally accurate, he's in Avonlea. Hey, Nick, how's it going today? Pretty good, Sean. Yourself? Good, 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 good. Um, Nick, we're gonna t- you, you got a list of a really good list of the five things that farmers need to consider in regards to seed treatment for spring. Um, basically, when you when you look at the market. Uh, and as you know, being focused in the area of seed, you know, being a seed growth specialist in the area of seed treatment, um, this this side of the industry has seen a lot of growth in recent years, eh? Oh, absolutely, Sean. And actually, it's because of that growth is, is the reason that Bayer Crop Science came out with the, the seed growth division, which is which is what I'm a part of. We we specialize in everything seed related, whether it be seed treatments, uh, equipment that that's used to treat them. Uh, polymers and coatings and actually service and that's our and that's our entire focus um, for our jobs okay so when, when you put together this list of the five these these five points that we're going to talk about um, are these kind of the, in some very quick summary are they kind of the the five misconceptions or five sort of here's the here's the five things you, you need to do to get off to a good start well I, I think there's lots of things that you can do Sean uh, to get but these are just a few of the things that I've seen. You know, I've been in the industry for a few years here now, and, and you know, I, I've been pretty heavily focused on seed treating on our own farm as well as w- with my customers. These are just five things that I've found that if you can do them and you can and you can take a little time and make sure you do them effectively, you're going to have a lot better success at the end of the day, which is ultimately what we want to do um, by increasing your yield with the, with the seed treatment. So, okay, Before we get to the list, let's have a word from our sponsor, BioVision Seed Labs. Seed Quality Diagnostics at BioVision Seed Labs. We have an eye for accuracy and are dedicated to timeliness. We partner with clients to support their seed quality testing through responsive customer service, reliable results, and leading edge services. You need the best analysis team working for your fast-paced seed company. Germination, purity, vigor, and disease testing is BioVision's expertise. So let's grow together. Okay, Nick, we're back. Uh, let's let's get into our into our list. Sure, Sean. Well, first thing I kind of want to say is treating your seed is one of the best ways to set your crop up for success. Uh, there's many con- there's many misconceptions about how and when to treat your seed for maximum protection and, and strongest yield. And myself and, and Bayer Bayer uh, Seed Growth, we want to address these challenges and provide growers with the facts to properly protect your seed. Uh, because of that, we've developed these five easy-to-remember tips to get the most from your seed treatment and to start your crops off right. Okay, well, that's that's kind of what I I believe that is very firmly what all of our listeners want to do. So what is the first thing? Number one would be to always treat your seed. Uh, you know, currently about 40% of Canadian farmers don't use a seed treatment. One of the biggest reasons is people don't believe that you need to treat your seed when it's planted into warm soils. In fact, warm soils also carry bacteria, just a different type of bacteria that is more prevalent in warm soils and disease that can impact your seed. No matter what the weather, the soil, or the seed, it's always important to make sure that you treat your seed. Seed treatments can also help create a healthier plant by building a better root system, which is going to help your plant get up and out of the ground faster, quickly establish, and and uh, at the end of the day, help increase your yield at the end of the day. At the end of the season, you know we, we've seen commodity prices drop. Um, traditionally, seed treatment is something that's you know when we're looking at the cost budget, uh, is something that gets dropped out because it's easy to drop out. Um, but that really should not necessarily be such an easy decision, and maybe one you don't want to make. No, f- for sure. Uh, I would uh, look at some of the crop samples that we've seen come off. Uh, the combines this year that are, are currently going through the, the seed labs and getting tested for germination of vigor. And I'm not saying in all areas, but majority of where I've been covering this year, we've seen uh, sub 
require germination and bigger radiance uh, increase in fusarium graminarum levels. Um, you know, all of these factors combined are going to have a dramatic effect on your seedling establishment next spring. And if we don't use a treatment that can protect against them, uh, we are going to have a we, we are going to have a reduced stand uh, going forward. The only other way to to offset uh, these diseases and, and reduce germination would be actually to be increase your seeding rate, um, which also is going to in, in turn cost a bunch of money too. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's it's it, you know it's it's a, it's a proactive measure, not reactive. Um, and uh, you know, a lot of times when we have in crop crop protection, we are we're reacting, right? Whereas seed treatment is very much of a proactive uh, strategy. At least that's the way I look at it. Number two. Sure. Uh, ensure you have properly cleaned seed. It's important to make sure your seed's clean because dust and dirty seed can help result in higher levels of buildup in the equipment and the seed treatments will, will, will readily bind to the dust and this can affect your seed coverage. Uh, you should also make sure that any seed that you're planning on using next year, have it tested at an accredited seed laboratory to determine the seedling disease is present and their levels. As well, I always recommend getting a germination and vigor reading is done as well. Yeah, and our sponsor of the seed pod is BioVision Seed Lab. So the, there you go. There's a tight, a nice tie in there. Um, it, it, it is shocking to see, you know, we talk about commodity prices coming down, but even at any levels, there, the amount of farmers that still think it's okay to back up to the bin and plant a crop untested and untreated. Yeah, absolutely. And really, you're going in blind for the most part because you don't know, again, you don't know what your germination is. You don't know kind of seedling diseases you're, you're, you're planting back into that soil. And in certain areas where they have uh, lower levels of, say, fusarium in the soils there, you could potentially be building your inoculum in there by not getting your seed tested to ensure that it is free of disease. Yeah, and I'll, I'll throw in there, it's even better to buy certified seed. Okay, so number three. Absolutely. <laughs> number three. Uh, number, th number three would be to use the right seed treatment. Once you get your seed tested at the at the accredited lab, um, you need to. What you'll do is you're, you're going to get a disease screen that's going to show you what diseases you have present on the seed. Now, just like no two farms are the same, no two seed treatments are the same too. So I would really uh, dig into exactly what you're trying to trying to protect against and select an appropriate uh, product. To, to control it. Uh, say, for example, you had Fusarium graminarum show up on your seed level or, or on your on your seed. Uh, you can use Raxel Pro Shield because it's been shown to reduce the amount of uh, Fusarium graminarum while, improve, uh, while improving your germination and vigor on your seed. Yeah, so I you know I think it you know it's really really important here um, that you know once you uh, you make the commitment to treat your seed, just like any other decision on the farm, do your homework. And just don't think that all seed treatments are the same. Uh, there are obviously, you know, you're with Bear Crop Science. There are other providers as well. All have different levels of treatment inside their portfolio in terms of actions and things that they do. So do your homework. Absolutely. Yeah. Don't go in blind. Uh, understand what you have. And yeah, and you're going to have a lot more chance of success. Okay. Number four. Number four would be to make sure your machine is properly calibrated. You need to know what your seed flow rate is through your auger, as well as what your seed treatment application rate should be. Once you calibrate your equipment, your accuracy is going to greatly improve. And, and this is important because, as we mentioned before, seed treatments aren't free. They're going to cost you some money. So by having equipment that's not properly calibrated, and if you're over-applying, it's going to greatly increase your costs. And if you're under-applying, you're not going to be getting the the full level of protection that, that that you think you should be with that product because you're not putting enough of it on. So ensure that you spend a little time prior to prior to seed treating season to just make sure that your equipment is calibrated. So judging by, so yeah, I guess there's different, you know, there's different, uh, when we look at calibration, there's diff, you know, there's a, there's a spectrum there. How, when you do do the proper calibration, you look at the curves and, and those kinds of things. Um, should you be calibrating in the morning and in the afternoon? Because obviously viscosity affects uh, flow. Sure, absolutely, Sean. So, so, and as we mentioned, there's there's lots of different products in the marketplace right now. 
they're going to cover a wide variety of diseases. But what I've seen too, and what we've we've actually tested, is that there's a wide range of viscosity levels between products as well too. So let's just say, for example, I'm going to talk about Raxel Pro because it's, it is a product that I'm very familiar with. It has a very low viscosity rate. It has a very low rate, which actually means that when you're treating in the morning compared to the afternoon, your fluctuation of viscosity is going to be greatly reduced as compared to some of the other products in the marketplace right now. Whereas, just as you mentioned, when it's when it's cold out in the morning, uh, the product will be thicker, and then as the morning or then as the day goes on and it gets warmer out, your viscosity can actually thin out, which is going to adjust your application rate. Which is so you're going to have to uh, play around with your play around with your pressures and play around with your uh, application with those with those other products. Is looking at the intensity of the coloring on the seed as it's entering the the seed drill or the truck the proper way to calibrate? You want to, the proper way to calibrate is have to identify what your sheet flow rate is from your, through through your treating auger. Uh, that can be done very simply by even taking a, a, a garbage pail or, a, or, or or backing your truck up under the auger and running it full for a, spe- a specific amount of time and timing it and weighing it to figure out what your bushels per minute through that auger would be. And a lot of farmers will actually know that because they've been using these augers for quite a few years. Uh, and then the second step would be is to, you need to actually capture capture or use a calibrated, uh, or you need to capture seed treatment uh, over, a, o- over a set amount of time to actually figure out what your equipment is applying there too. And you can measure that um, using a graduated cylinder or if you have a mixed tank that has graduated uh, lines on it, you can you can run a certain amount through and just measure it by the time it, it takes to uh, it takes to treat it. Okay, number five. Number five would be just to make sure that once you've got that product on the seed, ensure that you get a good secondary mix. Uh, sec- secondary mixing through your auger or through your secondary auger up into the back of your truck is, is extremely critical uh, because it's going to help turn that seed, that wet seed, that seed that's covered with treatment, move it around and ensure that you get coverage over all areas of that seed. Um, any chance you can, run that auger as slow as you can. Um, run it till it almost plugs because like the longer amount of time it has going up the flight there, it's going to have a better chance of tumbling and covering. And uh, and any, and any, any area of the seed that you don't potentially get coverage on is a, is a direct pathway for disease into that seed. Yeah, so so how, you know, so obviously the secondary mix, like you said, is number five. It is important. But how do we judge that? Like, how do we judge that we're getting a good secondary mix? Well, what I would do or what I've done in the past is to set my auger or, second, or set my auger, my secondary mix auger at, at a certain level. Um, begin treating, pull a sample on it, kind of look at it visually, as you said. Uh, you know, take some time and look at it. Don't just don't just look at it from the from the side of the truck. Pull it out with your pull it out with your hands as you're wearing gloves. Um, and then what I would do is I would is I would try and slow that auger down, and then pull another sample and compare the two. If I feel that slowing it down has increased my coverage, then I'm going to continue to slow down to a point um, where I feel I'm getting the optimum coverage. Again, you're going to be limited by the equipment you have. And every farm is going to be different. Now, in order to do a, a good seed treatment, there, there's a lot of ways to apply the product, right? So, you uh, we can there's the uh, the infamous uh, drip method, which I'm not sure we would highly recommend. There are a wide range of seed treatment applicators, right? So, do you have to spend, um, depending on what you're doing, um, do you have to? Do you have to spend the sixty thousand dollars for the high end machine, or um, there obviously is much cheaper options? Like, isn't the point just make sure you're getting it applied properly and what and get the right seed treatment uh, applicator that works best on your farm? Uh, for sure, Sean. I've been on lots of different farms out there, and the one thing I can tell you about seed treatments and, and farms is that they are not once once she doesn't fit all. Um, I would really sit down and look at your operation and and decide what you're trying to do. Are you trying to treat just cereals? Uh, are you trying to treat a bunch of cereals and pulses? Um, you know, 
you just doing barley? Are you doing some oats in there? What are, what are you trying to do uh, first off? As you mentioned, there's there's lots of different types of equipment out there. Are you looking into getting soybeans? If you want to use soybeans, you've got to get a little more specialized. Um, but at the end of the day, um, as long as you can have a system that is going to be able to accurately um, regulate your, your seed treatment flow um, by using some sort of pressure method, whether it be, a, be electric or, or by air. And, and you mentioned the drip herb treated before. The, you know, those, are, those are not a very accurate way of treating. Um, when your when you're upside down jug is, is full, you're, you're going to be applying more pressure, you're going to be applying more product at the beginning than at the end just because of strict gravity. Um, as, as the product starts to, as the product is getting towards the tail end there, it's, it's going to start to, uh, the application rate is going to change, change drastically, and, and it's not a very good way to, to apply it. So, yeah, I would really sit down and, and try and decide what you want, and then try and engage your, your local seed growth specialist, because actually one of our biggest roles is, is working with producers and equipment, trying to decide which type of equipment fits their farm, and, and also we part of our job is to work with the, the equipment manufacturers, uh, some of the major ones in Western Canada, to, to know their equipment, to, to, to work with them on, on an increasing application, increasing coverage. That's really what our job is here too. So, you know, we are a, we are a source uh, to, to be used hopefully, and, uh, and hopefully we can help make seed treating easier for your farm and, and make sure it fits your farm uh, the way you want it to, not the way, uh, not the way we, we want it to. Well, Nick, thanks a lot for uh, for joining us on uh, this episode of the Seed Pod, and uh, hopefully we'll see you in the winter meeting season somewhere at uh, one of the meetings. Appreciate it, Sean. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers.